speakers that are going to be speaking uh, today. Hopefully, this will be informative to you all. Uh, again, we got folks from the city of Pittsburgh, um, from Chatham Center for Entrepreneurship, from Neva. Uh, you know, I'll be honest, we don't have you know a ton of information because it's. I mean, we're still waiting for information to come from the federal government, but hopefully, we can at least do what we can to uh, educate you on what we know up to this point. And, and really, um, if there are any questions, hopefully we can answer them. Um, and we will be referring to, obviously the focus of this webinar is the uh, Shuttered Venue grant, but we will be uh, speaking a little bit on the PPP and the EIDL, because I know a lot of people are starting to work out which uh, funding source they should be uh, applying to. So uh, without, Further ado, I guess I will uh, let uh, other folks introduce themselves. First, Josette. Hi, everybody. I'm Josette Fitzgibbons. I am uh, with the Urban Redevelopment Authority. I'm a business program officer. Hi, I'm Erica Miller. I'm with the State Theater in Uniontown, Pennsylvania. And I think we'll, because we have a lot of guests, maybe we'll just focus on, on our um, presenters at the moment. Uh, Henry, sorry, no, there's no problem at all. Uh, Henry, do you want to, do you yourself maybe drop the, um, the link in the chat as well? Yeah, no problem. My name is Henry horn -Pied. I'm the Economic Opportunity Manager uh, and the Office of Equity for the City of Pittsburgh. That means I do small business uh, work, neighborhood business district work and personal, personal wealth building work. Today, though, I am taking attendance, and so I have dropped a link there into the chat, and I would appreciate it if you'd all click on it. It's just a simple online sign-in sheet, super simple, name your business, your name, email, you know the drill. So please do fill that out so that we can be in contact later for further advocacy or outreach efforts. Uh, Kate? Hi, I'm Kate Davis Booker. Uh, a program manager and business advisor with the Center for Women's Entrepreneurship at Chatham University. We are an SBA resource partner. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that when I get into it. But I think next up is Allison. Hi, everybody. Oh, uh, oops, sorry. I was going to say maybe Adam, he could quickly introduce himself. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Sure. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Adam Vallon. Uh, locally, I'm a marketing manager at a uh, independent con uh, concert promoter called Dressing Entertainment. For the last 10 months or so, I've been taking on the role of Pennsylvania precinct captain and state outreach coordinator for the National Independent Venue Association, or NEVA for short. And then we'll get to Allison, but I'll just reiterate real quickly that uh, Henry put a link into the chat just if, if folks want additional information, please click that, fill it out. It's like five questions, just so we can keep um, a running list to get back in touch with you with a link to this uh, webinar or, or additional information as we hear about it. But Allison? Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Allison Harnden. I'm with the City of Pittsburgh and the Office of Nighttime Economy. A lot of you may not be aware that we exist. That's okay. You're not alone. Uh, we are, if you're a food, beverage, or entertainment business, we're your liaison to the city. And I think if you can think of us sort of as your concierge to try to figure out what you need, what resource we can connect you to that. So uh, we are not an enforcement arm. We uh, help businesses get started and know um, where to go to get information. Um, if you're expanding your business, if you're trying you have questions about staying in compliance, if you have questions about where we are in this COVID and, and how you can get help, we're your resource to connect you. Um, I want to let you know that we do, uh, we used to do a monthly newsletter, but uh, when COVID happened, we realized things were so fluid and changing so quickly that we needed to keep people informed weekly. So if you want to sign up for our newsletter, if you don't get it, um, I'm going to have Emily from our office put uh, the link in the chat at some point today and you can sign up for that. This week's new newsletter that came out yesterday, we can send it out if you didn't get it. It has some information about securing your business during demonstrations. Not that we have any information that something's going to happen, but it's always good to be prepared. So we have that and we have some links to PPP 
and some links to um, NEVA and different, um, and NEVA, in case you didn't notice, is National Independent Venue Association, which most of you probably know. Um, I'll put my email address in the chat if you want to connect with me or ask any questions. And um, I think next up is Kate, who's going to talk about some of the really specific specifics that you're here for today. So um, I also just want to say, um, I'm just really amazed at you guys as an industry. I get a little choked up over this, like what you guys have been through and, um, and everything you've done to the grit and um, everything you've done to persevere is just amazing. And, um, and my hat's off to you and I hope we can help you survive. Hey, thank you, Allison. And I couldn't agree with you more. Um, the, the way businesses have evolved and pivoted and changed and are doing what they can to stay alive and to be there and be resources, um, you know, and assets to our community uh, for the long term has really amazed me. And I applaud you all. Um, so first up, I just wanted to do a quick introduction to the Center for Women's Entrepreneurship. Like I said, we are an SBA resource partner. What that means is that we are partly funded by your federal tax dollars um, through the Small Business Administration. We offer training, programming, and mentoring, uh, mentoring and counseling services. So we offer free one-on-one -on -one business counseling um, to entrepreneurs, and uh, we offer on ongoing training programs and one-off webinars and different different information. We I have free business counseling um, called a funding clinic that includes, uh, you know, looking at your loan options, how to refinance loans, how to prepare your loan application. And we've worked closely with the URA on some of their loan programs as well. So, um, so now I'm jumping into it. Uh, we're going to, I'm doing a quick overview of some of the general federal stimulus programs. Um, and there is a lot that's unknown out there, especially uh, about the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant. But just as a quick comparison of the three programs that are out there right now that you could potentially get capital from, there's the Paycheck Protection Program. Um, that's used primarily to cover payroll costs for employees, and it is a potentially forgivable loan. I'm sure most of you are familiar with it. There's the COVID Idle Economic Injury and Disaster Loan. That's a loan, not forgivable, will need to be paid back. And it's used primarily to cover working capital needs and existing pre-existing debt obligations um, that were established before the pandemic. Um, okay, so the latest uh, stimulus program, which I know all of you are here to hear about, is um, the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant. And this is a grant, not a loan, which is what makes it so attractive. Um, and it does allow for some broader use of the funds and it will not need to be repaid. Uh, we're gonna go over some of the eligibility requirements and some of the um, acceptable expenses in a little bit. Um, so the SBA has promised that they're shortly going to release a matrix that compares the three loans um, and how they work together and who should be applying for what. It is not on their website yet but um, they say shortly it should be. So keep your eyes out for that, but just a quick um, overview of, is it open right now? Is it taking applications? So idle loans, yes. Paycheck protection program loans, sort of, yes. Uh, in some instances, it's currently, you can apply for it through CDFIs and some smaller banks as of next Tuesday. The applications will open from larger banks who've opted in. Um, and the SBA does have a website, a lender match program where you can find, um, find out who's offering the applications, who's offering the loans right now. Um, and it has changed slightly um, since the last round, including now there's the availability of the double dip PPP. So the second round, um, and I can go into some more detail about the requirements for that, but it is different than the first round. Um, next up, are these funds forgivable or a grant with the idle? The answer is a hard no. 
Uh, they are not forgivable. They are not a grant. It is a loan. It will need to be paid back. It does have some uh, pretty decent terms, but you will be paying it back. Um, there is a one year deferral period on payments though. Um, with the Paycheck Protection Program, it is potentially forgivable if used for approved expenses. And with the um, venue for shuttered operators grant, uh, it is a grant, so totally forgivable. Although there will be some compliance um, and uh, record keeping requirements if you do receive it for several years afterwards. Uh, now, the question that a lot of people have, how do these loans work together? So um, one of the few limitations for the uh, sh shuttered um, the VSOG is the, um, you cannot apply for it if you apply for or receive a PPP after December 27th, 2020. If you received one during the first round, that's absolutely fine. Um, but you can't apply for PPP and VSOG. Um, you can apply for IDLE and VSOG, and you can apply for IDLE and PPP, but PPP and VSOG don't play well together, um, and you cannot receive both. And the SBA, like I said, hopefully in their soon to be released matrix, will um, will compare the various programs and help you determine which one is gonna be the right for your organization or your entity. Okay, so looking at the Paycheck Protection Program, um, this, who is this for? This is for businesses and other entities that have or haven't previously received a Paycheck Protection Loan. If you haven't, then um, the requirements are pretty open. If you have previously received a PPP loan, then to receive the second round of PPP funding, you would need to show a 25% reduction um, in your revenue numbers in one quarter for one quarter of last year, at least one quarter of last year versus the prior year to apply for, to apply for and receive the second round of PPP. Um, <clears throat> the, some of the regulations around the latest PPP have changed slightly. In the past, um, you could apply to get a forgivable loan of up to two and a half times your average monthly payroll in 2019. Uh, now that amount has changed. It's still two and a half times for most businesses, but for some businesses uh, that are in the hospitality industry, uh, it can go up to three and a half times the average monthly payroll. <clears throat> Where can you receive these loans right now? Currently, as I said before, CDFIs and small banks are offering them. Uh, shortly, as of next Tuesday, uh, larger banks will be opening their application portals. And the SBA does provide a lender match uh, program where you can input some information about your business and where you're located to find lenders who are offering this right now. Um, what's the deadline on this loan? This loan program right now will close at the end of March. Um, you know, the last time they did PPP, they extended it a couple times. So who knows what'll happen here. Um, why would you apply for this loan? Because it's forgivable if used for acceptable expenses. Um, it is also has a fairly low interest rate if you don't use it for acceptable expenses. Uh, moving on, taking a look at the economic injury and disaster loan, the idle loan. So this is for businesses or entities that have lost revenue due to the pandemic and need working capital. Um, you can apply for a 30 year loan. The interest rate for business is 3.75. Um, if the loan is over $25,000, it will have to be collateralized. Um, where do you access this loan? Directly with the SBA. The portal is open now. It can be used for pre-existing financial obligations, ongoing debt repayment and it can be used for operating costs pretty broadly. Um, it, 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 we've had, I've had lots of clients who have applied for and received it. Um, and it's the SBA, like I said, they are um, delaying payments on it for a year. Uh, interest will continue to accrue, but um, the one year payment del delay has been helpful to many businesses out there. Um, another question we've been getting is, what about the idle advance that they had in the last round? 
the funds for the idle advance have been fully used up. So that program is no longer open. All right, so starting to look at the shuttered venue operators grant. Um, Excuse me, hey so, Kate. Yep. Um, this is Josette. We just had a couple questions in the chat that I thought this would be a good time to, to um, answer them quickly. One is where is the lender match from? And the other I think is an, a, um, a question we don't yet know the answer to unless Kate knows uh, knows it. Um, can you apply for both the PPP and VSOG knowing that you can only receive or keep one or are there restrictions against actually applying for both? I do not know the answer to that question. Um, later in my slides, I have a bunch of contact information for the local SBA office. They're going to be uh, the best resource for getting an answer to that. Additionally, I also list um, the uh, direct email for the SBA um, shuttered venue operators grant. Um, and I'm going to put that in the chat right now if you don't have it already. Um, it's SVO grant at sba.gov. They have said send your questions in um, and we will address them. We'll get back to you. I also just threw in the chat the link to the lender match program. Um, one of our local SBA reps last, who I spoke with earlier in the week said Pursuit Lending is a CDFI that is um, doing loans in the region right now. Uh, are volunteer organizations eligible for SBOG? Well, that's a great question. And we'll have to look at that. Um, by volunteer, do you mean a nonprofit? Um, because nonprofits are eligible for SVOG. Um, but. So I noticed that it, you can't, um, I did notice in the rules that it's mostly for, you can't use it to supplement the cost of a, of a, a cost that's not there. Right, like so, you can't use it to make up for work that a volunteer would have done because that wouldn't have been paid. I did notice that in the rules. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we'll. So SB... Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, Kate. I, I was just gonna maybe let's take a quick breath and let Adam just introduce his organization just as a preface to the grant. I know everyone's really eager to hear a little bit more about it, but I, I think it's a good moment just for Adam to jump in, talk about maybe a little bit of the background here just for a minute. Great, Thanks, Adam. Yeah, yeah, no worries. And I'm gonna try and, uh, if I can share my screen real quick. Um, uh, uh, well, uh, I'll just do a quick introduction. So uh, first and first and foremost, oh, there we go. Let me see if I can. Do it, Adam. There you uh, go. Awesome, everybody see my screen? All right, great. Um, so uh, first and foremost, I wanted to thank everybody here for, for even organizing this at a local level. Um, it's just such a great resource to see that, you know, relying on, on places like the CWE and, and your local SBA offices are going to be critical in, um, in applying for this. I mean, even personally, as somebody who works for an independent venue or independent promote, contract promoter, I mean, we're going to be applying for this as well. Um, but like I mentioned earlier, over the last 10 months, we've really been uh, amplifying our role within the National Independent Venue Association. For those that are not familiar, uh, NEVA or the National Independent Venue Association for short formed, uh, really expeditedly formed in response to COVID uh, are as a 501c6 as a lot to lobby for realistically when we first started, it was for national reopening. And when we understood that this was a, a much deeper issue than you know reopening two months down the road and seeing that it's now potentially upwards of an 18 month reopening phase from 2020, um, we quickly realized that we needed to get together because there really wasn't a voice for independent venues, promoters, um, festivals, um, and theaters and everybody else under the sun under, under the live entertainment industry. Um, so we quickly got together, uh, were able to get capital funding from uh, independent entities, from independent ticketing agencies, hired our first lobbyist, and quickly got to work on advocating for specific industry relief through through NEVA and through our lobbyist, Aiken Gump. 
And through that, we were able to advocate for specific policy changes like the Restart Act and um, the now passed Save Our Stages Act or the correct nomenclature, which is we're talking about today is the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant. Um, our membership, we, we represent 3000 plus members in all 50 states in DC. It, it includes everybody from for-profit venue, uh, concert venues to uh, nonprofit PACs to government owned entities. We have membership all across the country from anybody from uh, your small, you know, coffee shop down the street to the Red Rocks Amphitheater in, in Colorado. And um, really what Neva has been doing has been here, the mission here has been to preserve the ecosystem for the live events, uh, venues and promoters and those that fall under. And, and what really has been happening over the last month or so since we've been since we've been fortunate to have this this act passed is that you know we've been trying to do uh, very targeted outreach as Neva has been an incredible resource for those that are not aware I highly encourage everybody to to look up I'll, I'll throw in the join link uh, for those that are interested um, and I'm happy to throw my email in the chat to, to take the conversation offline um, but Neva um, Neva currently is, is accepting new memberships. It's, it's still free to join. The, the, the board understands that we're in a position that, uh, you know, no members are really making money at this point. We're a shuttered industry. And so uh, the, the, the association as a whole is trying to provide itself as a resource to, to independent venues and promoters to help preserve the live events ecosystem. And uh, like I said, I'm gonna, throw, I'm gonna throw my email and the join link in the chat but I encourage everybody that's on this call today to consider joining Neva as a member for resources, not only for things like the, the SVOG, but for future resources as we look to push for reopening guidelines and uh, DEI inclusion uh, on a national standard and, and work on things like collective insurance and healthcare on, on a national scale. So I encourage everybody to, to apply. It's, it's nevasos.org backslash join, but I will send, I'll throw that in the chat. Uh, and I think, I, I think I'm either talking, tossing back to Kate or Allison, but I appreciate you, everybody. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll go back to Kate, but just want to give a quick shout out to Neva. I mean, this money doesn't come about without some strong lobbying and, and really insight. So, you know, I think we owe Neva uh, and everyone else who advocate for this, these funds, you know, a lot of credit. Um, but yeah, I think we can dive back into the, into the nitty gritty uh, with, with Kate. And again, keep putting questions in the chat. And we'll try and find uh, strategic times uh, to answer those questions. But thanks, uh, thanks again, Adam. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, happy to jump back into the nitty gritty. And I did see the question about uh, potential usages of the uh, SVOG funds and um, mortgage is, an appropriate expense that you could use it for a mortgage. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be used for payroll. It's not like the PPP. Uh, let me get my presentation back up here. Okay. So who can apply for it? Um, businesses that meet eligibility requirements. And I'll go through those. I'm sure, you know, you, for all of you, this is your business. You guys have been looking at this uh, pretty hard. So you know, we're, the information is still filtering down. Uh, you know, they just re updated their website just this week. The SBA just started running info sessions on the program. Um, so I'm telling you what I know, but there are still a lot of questions out there. Um, what it is, you, it is a grant. Um, you could receive a grant of 45% of your 2019 gross earned revenue. Okay, now that's for businesses who were in business for the entirety of 2019. If you weren't in business the whole year in 2019, I'll hit on that in a couple slides. Uh, where can you apply for and get this grant? Uh, based on the info session that the SBA had yesterday, it sounds like it will definitely be on grants.gov and it will, there may also be a portal through the SBA website directly. Um, that's still TBD. When? They would not commit. Um, the program is not open yet. They said it will be open shortly. They will begin taking applications shortly. I don't know exactly what that means, uh, but you know, I, in a couple slides, I'll tell you some things that you can be working on now so that you're prepared to apply for it. 
when it does open. Um, and why would you want to apply for this grant? Because it has a very broad array of acceptable uses for the grant funds. Additionally, it's likely going to be a larger amount than your than a PPP loan because you know, the Paycheck Protection Program loans are based on average monthly payroll costs, not gross earned revenue, which should be a larger number there. Um, okay, so eligibility. Uh, I think probably everybody who's on this webinar understands this. Uh, these are the eligible entities, uh, live venue operators and promoters, theatrical producers, live performing arts organization operators, museum operators, uh, movie theaters, talent representatives, and then entities owned by entities who qualify. Okay, so a couple things that could um, make you ineligible uh, if you weren't in operation before the end of February, 2020. Um, if you receive a PPP loan after December 27th, uh, if you don't intend to reopen, that makes you in, ineligible. Um, and then there are a bunch of really ass, uh, assorted venue specific requirements. And I'm sure Adam can get into those in more detail if you have specific questions. Um, I, it's on the SBA website. It's on, I shared an article from the National Law Review Board. Uh, they also have some detail on what your venue has to have. Um, I'm not a venue specialist, I'm a, so don't ask me. <laughs> um, okay, how do you calculate the amount of the grant that you could be eligible for? Um, on the SBA's website, they have a couple examples of how to calculate this amount. This amount. It maxes out at $10 million. Um, like I said, if you were in operation for the full year in 2019, it's 45% of your gross earned revenue. Um, if you were in operation for less than the full year, you would take the average of the full month that you were operating and multiply that average number by six. And that would be the amount of the grant that you are eligible for. Um, what can you use it for? So payroll costs, rent payments, utility payments, mortgage payments, but you can't prepay principal. You can't use it to acquire new, new real estate. Um, it can be used for other scheduled debt payments, worker protection expenditures, it's a pretty broad uh, list of allowable expenses. And this list came directly from the SBA's website. So, um, you know, they had said they will offer more information <clears throat> as they're ready to release it, but this is what they're telling everyone right now. Okay, so <clears throat> this is an important <clears throat> part of the program is priority access. So, uh, there's $15 billion that they have allocated for this fund. Um, the, they will be releasing grants by order of priority. So entities who have suffered the most can receive their grants first. Um, and first priority for the first two weeks of the award, once it opens, <clears throat> is for entities who have uh, suffered a 90% or greater revenue reduction over this certain period, April 2020 through December 2020, okay? And then second priority, entities who suffered 70%, third priority, 25%. So um, what I'm gonna go over next is how to prepare to apply for this grant. And um, these numbers, the, these priority numbers make a huge difference. Um, I imagine that this grant will get exhausted like most of the uh, other stimulus funds out there. Um, and so, you know, I would encourage everyone to prepare <clears throat> their financial statements and have their financials ready so that they can um, be, uh, have their entities looked at and receive the grant as early on in the program as possible as they qualify for. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, the SBA has not said that you will need to do this, these steps, but um, I, every grant that I've seen listed on grants.gov, you are required to complete these steps in order to apply for and receive those grants. So I'm going to assume that they're going to require these steps. Um, there are three steps. Uh, one is to obtain a DUNS number. This is something that can be done at the website there. Um, it takes a day or two. 
it, it's not that complicated. It's free, but it does take some time. You have to fill out some forms. Two is to register with the system for awards management. Um, this is a US federal government system. It's not the easiest thing to use. Um, it can take up to two weeks to get your registration in place when you register on SAM. Uh, you have to have an EIN to register on SAM, um, and you will be required to, to, to complete the registration on SAM. You have to send uh, a notarized letter. So, you know, however long by snail mail. So, however long that takes, it can take up to two weeks to get your SAM registration in place. Um, and then you register with grants.gov. That happens in the same day. Um, so, you know, to prepare to be ready to apply for the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant, I'd suggest you get started on these steps today, given that the system for award management can take up to two weeks. And these steps need to be undertaken in the order I've listed them here. So you need the DUNS number to complete the SAM application. Um, and then you need to have completed the SAM application to register with grants.gov. Um, <clears throat> now, things you can do internally within your entities to prepare, uh, get your financial statements in order. Um, so given that priority access to the limited in grant funds is given to those en entities that have demonstrated the greatest reduction in gross earned revenues, um, you're gonna need to support that somehow. Um, the FBA has said they, that you should be preparing now your, month, your revenues by month so that you're ready to present that. Uh, and it's even better if, if those revenue numbers are separated out, detailed out a little into, um, you know, where, what types of revenue, whether it's tickets or, you know, sales of goods or sales of beverages, just so that you have those detailed out. Um, and given that having that detail and being able to show the drop in revenue uh, increases the, your priority in accessing the grant. This is a big thing to start preparing if you don't have it already. Uh, the SBA has also said that you should prepare a list of how you would use the grant funds and be prepared to support the uses of those funds. So whether it's you know just having a copy of your mortgage statement to show on a regular basis, you're paying $2,000 a month and you have to continue to pay that or maybe your past payroll or whatever the expenses are that you're going to be using the funds for. These are some of the things that you wanna get ready ahead of time. Um, <clears throat> the SBA has established an email address for this program specifically. Uh, I put it in the chat, but it's also in the presentation here, svogrant at sba.gov. I sent them a question yesterday. They haven't responded yet. I'm sure they're getting inundated with questions. Um, but I would recommend, you know, you want, you want to get the info from the horse's mouth. So uh, reach out to them, send them emails. This is also the website where they have details on the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant. Um, additionally, and I can put the link to this list um, in the chat, this is all public information. This is on their website. Contact your Pittsburgh district office of the SBA, okay? These, here's the district director. You've got her name, her phone number, her email, um, everybody else in the local office. The SBA is gonna be implementing and administering this program. They, you know, make yourselves heard, get on the list. Be sure you're getting emails about, uh, that'll let you know when they have info sessions, when they are opening the applications. I wish I could give you more concrete information on it, um, but they just haven't released it yet. Um, uh, now to move on to the Center for Women's Entrepreneurship, if you are having, the Center for Women's Entrepreneurship, first off, is open to everyone, not just women. Um, we serve entrepreneurs of all genders. Um, we have established on our website a COVID-19 small business resource page where we list uh, information from the federal government and other entities about various resources and access to different funds. Um, we also offer free telephone and online counseling hours uh, to, to assist in accessing these programs um, and developing your recovery strategy. Um, so you know, as an SBA resource partner, 
we are given all the forms and the guidance, usually a day before they're uh, released to the general public. We're also given uh, information about when the programs are going to be opened and when they're going to be closed. Um, so, you know, get on our mailing list uh, or schedule a one on one appointment with one of our business counselors and we will sit with you virtually, uh, help you do the SAMS application, help you do the DUNS application, help you look at your financial statements and make sure that they're in a in a good format to be submitting them to the SBA and help you prepare an application that's as strong as possible in the hope that you can access as, as much funds as you can get. Um, the SBA has said that they will be hosting a, a public info session about the shuttered venue operator grant. Um, they have not scheduled it yet. Hopefully it will be soon. Um, as soon as there's more information released, the Center for Women's Entrepreneurship will be sending emails with details on the program and the application process. Um, so I think that covers most of what we know. Happy to deal with individual questions now. And I'm gonna throw the link to the local SBA contact in the chat as well. All right, I've got two questions here we've been waiting on in the chat. First is from Stage Wright. Quote, we are a school for the performing arts and a professional theater company. We produce performances at multiple venues and provide arts education training. Do we sound eligible? <laughs> That's a great question. Let me... Adam, I'm wondering if he would be willing to talk on that. Oh, you're I guess muted, it does Adam. sound a little bit more like a booking agent than it does sound like a venue operator. Uh huh. If they don't have their own space, what does that mean? Um, if it's not a physical space, it's likely as a promoter. But again, I would I would refer to guidance for, for specific guidance because I know that there's going to be more specific eligibility requirements released from the SBA as a, a regarding eligibility specifically for, uh, you know, non live event spaces. If it's a promoter, if it's a festival. And the next question I have here, unless we're not done. Okay. Uh, now, Justin, you may need to provide context, but the question was, do you read this as you cannot use it to even make payments on EIDL, which I think is a reference to the uh, Shuttered Venue Grant? Mm -hmm. So the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant can be used to make payments on debt that was pre-existing prior to the pandemic. Um, as far as idle payments, uh, that's a good question. Um, and I don't have a direct answer for you. I would encourage you to send that to the uh, SVO grant at sba.gov. Thanks, Kate. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And our next question comes from James McNeil at the City Theater. Uh, again, I may need context here, but the question is 90%, 75%, 25% of total or just earned revenue loss. Has that been defined? That is a great question. And I don't know that it has been defined in terms of the priority. If I pull up the SBA website, because they do have some uh, examples of how it's calculated, So in their example calculations, they are just using a gross revenue number. Now, I can't say that that is defined and that is 100% how they're going to be administering it, but those are the examples that the SBA has provided. That's consistent with the PPC guidance too. Like they're always saying gross, 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 gross. Mm -hmm. um, and I would guess given that this is from City Theater, this is a question that has to do with um, uh, contributions and other grants um, and how that would affect the numbers. Um, and I, I really don't know. I can't give you a, a hard answer and I'm sorry for that. Um, again, I'm not sure that anyone knows. <laughs> I'm not sure the SBA knows yet. Hi, Joe Pro. Are oh, we you got... raising yeah, your hand? Good. 
You're muted, by the way. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm John Pro, the Regional Director for the State's Department of Community and Economic Development. Kate, thank you so much for doing this. Henry, Josette, we appreciate it. Um, I want to go back to Tony Marino's question, I think, from stage right. I'm looking at a definition here, and if this helps you, I don't know. Um, uh, live venue, performing arts operators and promoters and theater producers. This means that your principal activity, wherein a cover charge is used to pay performers a percentage of proceeds, at least 70% of your revenue had to come from ticket sales, refreshments, merchandise, qualified fees, or educational initiatives. So I don't know if that clears up Tony's question or not, or if it, or if it complicates it. Um, but I'm, I'm sort of looking at that definition. Yeah, I wish I had a straight answer for you, buddy, but you sure as heck sound eligible to this layperson. So folks, I'm going to jump in here just as a, a quick reminder that we are going to be, we are recording this because um, I've had some questions come through of, uh, you know, will the PowerPoints be available and such. We are recording this and hopefully this afternoon we'll get it on the URA website. So you'll be able to access it again, um, you know, if it, with questions that come up. Um, and at and this point... Corinne, do you want to talk talk about our um, our work group meetings that we're we're hopefully going to be doing? Yeah, real real quickly. Um, we know you guys are grant writers, and and we don't have all the answers, but you know we also know that Kate can't answer everyone's questions at one time either. Uh, one idea we're kicking around is to have a working group, so folks uh, who want to kind of have more sessions, maybe on a weekly basis. Um, either this size or smaller size can just get together um, and, and bounce around questions they have. So uh, if people are interested in that, I think our, our method now for uh, forming those is through that Google form that Henry has been posting in the chat. So just put in information, say, yeah, I'm interested in, in, in participating in a working group. And then, you know, we can reach back out so we can continue uh, helping you as we get more information and as you're sort of working your way through it. Because um, yeah, it's not, it's not easy stuff. Uh, obviously Kate's out there, the SBA local office is there for one-on-one -on -one assistance. Um, we just want to put another resource out there uh, as you guys are, are trying to put this together. So if you're interested, go to that, that Google form that was just posted again. And um, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure there's additional questions that are coming in. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see, seeing on, I'm just gonna throw out a couple other notes. URA does have you know, a lot of services that we provide, not usually direct technical assistance. That's what we rely on partners like Kate. We do have a lot of uh, uh, lending products at the URA. Uh, some other small business assistance when it comes to, you know, moving your business online, et cetera. Um, the county has a really nice loan right now if you're looking for just a loan. Uh, they have a 0% loan um, that's available. Uh, but obviously, I think everyone's focused it's on getting, getting grant dollars if they can. Uh, I guess I'll kick it back to Kate if there's anything else that's come to mind or if there are other questions that come up. We'll just field that for the next 10 minutes or so and then wrap it up. Uh, but again, if you're interested in, in continuing the conversation, please just go to that sheet, say you're interested, in, and we'll reach back out about scheduling another time. Yeah, that's exactly right. I agree with you, Corinne. Just uh, if you want to register, as soon as we have more information, we will share it. Um, and, you know, uh, as soon as the applications open, hopefully we'll be able to support entrepreneurs and different entities in, in executing their applications. Um, and as you're preparing to get um, your application ready, if you have any issues working through your financial statements or looking at the past couple of years, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. I put our email in the chat, uh, women's-entrepreneurship at chatham.edu, as well as our website. Um, and 
Additionally, reach out to your local SBA reps. Also, I saw somebody else mentioned, reach out to your political representatives. Um, you are correct, the SAM website can get backed up um, and put some pressure on your local political representatives to represent you and your entities and help uh, get your the application through the process. If there's any other questions, I'm happy to help them. I'm all, we can also, you know, it, it's nice to see so many different entities on this webinar and I'm sure you each have specialized knowledge regarding your businesses and your entities and what research you've done. So if you wanna just share anything, you're welcome to put that in the chat too. If not, maybe we can wrap up a couple minutes early. <laughs> Yeah, also, I just want to remind, keep a lookout for our um, our working groups that we're going to be doing. We're learning this as you are. Uh, this has been a, a year of learning on the fly. So um, we're going to try to have these working groups kind of slash office hours just for you to drop in and um, uh try to get questions answered as we get them. Thank you, Adam. Yes, this is my dog who joins almost every meeting. Luckily, he's being quiet on this one. Uh, I'll also just make a plug that we are gonna do a, another webinar on the 25th uh, in the evening. And I'll check, I think it's five o'clock. Um, I think with, with Kate as well, uh, at 6 p.m., again, talking about some of these overall products. So the PPP, the IDL, I think the tax credit. Um, so a little less focused on just the shuttered venue, but we are doing another one about the general stimulus money that's coming down uh, on the 25th at, at six. And Crin, thanks for mentioning the tax credit, which I didn't cover in the federal stimulus. That's something everyone should be taking a look at, um, the employee tax credit. And if you have a trusted accountant or financial partner who you could talk to about how these various stimulus programs are gonna uh, play together and uh, what's gonna be most advantageous for your entity, I'd suggest you start that discussion sooner rather than later. Great, seeing no other questions, I really appreciate everyone uh, coming. Obviously, mostly our, our panelists, uh, Kate and Adam and Allison, Henry and Josette for, for jumping in and helping on this. We know we did this a little bit uh, uh, early before the information was out there, but we know you all would be trying to put your information together as well before it actually opens up. So uh, we appreciate your patience with us as well as we, you know, don't know, don't know everything, but we're really just, we're trying to get out there as soon as possible. Um, yeah, again, we'll try and share this information via website or, or email it out. And hopefully we'll be hearing from all of you soon. Good luck. You know, we're all we're all in this together and, and we really hope that everyone we can get as many uh, grants funded locally as we can. Um, good luck with with everything. And yeah, circle back with us if you have additional questions. With that, I think we'll we'll close it up. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. I have two. Ah. <sighs>